Hi people, welcome to the Run Testers and in this video we're here with our full review of the Ultra Torin 7. Now this is a big stack workhorse neutral shoe that Ultra says is built for daily miles on the road. Is it any good? Well we've put it to the test. Lots of miles to find out. Watch on. So first up some quick specs then and the Ultra Torin 7 has Ultra's trademark zero drop with a high stack of 30 millimeters in the heel and in the forefoot. That heel stack is lower and the forefoot stack is higher than many daily rivals. They weigh in at 9.7 ounces or 275 grams in our test UK men's size eight and a half. Price wise, they'll set you back 130 pounds or 150 US dollars. Now let's take a quick look at the shoe then and what's new with the seventh gen of the Ultra Torin. Well, starting with the midsole, the max stack midsole comes with that trademark Ultra Zero drop or balance cushioning that they call it, but it now has two extra millimeters of compression molded EVA Ultra Ego Max foam. The foam is tuned to be softer than Ultra's regular Ego foam, but it's not quite as responsive as the Ego Pro TPU you find in Ultra's faster premium shoes. The forefoot is nice and wide, creating a big, more reliable landing zone. There's also a, mil, a kind of a mild forefoot rocker, and the midsole has flex grooves that maps the bones and the tendons of the foot. The aim there is to let the midsole work with your foot's natural movement. Up top, you've got engineered mesh uppers that have been updated for more breathability, though I think they're still pretty dense and, and tight knit though. Plus, there's a more plush tongue padded heel collars and a molded heel collar, which is there to add comfort. Flip them over and you've got Ultra's foot pod outsole design, as I said, that maps the bones and tendons of the foot. You've also got a pretty healthy covering of outsole rubber here, as you can see. Now when it came to fit, I ran in a UK size eight and a half, which is my normal size. I found these fit well and true to size. You get Ultra's standard foot shaped toe box that's more snug than their most spacious fit shoes, but there's still ample space lengthwise and across the top to give your toes wiggle room. Compared to most shoes, these are pretty roomy. There's good space in the midfoot as well around that toe knuckle area. And I also got good fit into the heel and decent lockdown across the top of the foot. And overall, I'd recommend going true to size in the Ultra Torian 7. So I've run more than 40 miles in the Ultra Torin 7. The majority of those miles have been low and slow, easy base building runs. My longest run was 90 minutes, but I've also thrown in the odd mixed pace run, pushing the tempo up to half and marathon pace just to see how they coped. I logged my miles mainly on the road, but some light off-road to river paths, park paths, that kind of thing, just to test the stability. Now, first up, if you're a fan of more disappearing daily trainers, you'll notice these feel like more shoe on the foot than more agile rivals or things like the OnCloud Surfer 7 or the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. That might be down to the wider midsole base overall. Stepping comfort though is great. There's a softness to the footbed and a saloon car kind of plushness to the uppers and the tongues and the heel padding. And somehow the Ultra Torin 7 manages to offer the best of both worlds, I think. You get a snug fit across the midfoot and into the heel to limit movement, but a roomy enough toe box so you don't feel cramped and you've got enough wiggle room. The ride is quite well balanced too. The Torin soft footbed delivers cradled landings, reduces the road impact, while the big wide platform I think offers reliable stability and fairly good control for what is essentially a higher stack shoe. Now as a relative newcomer to Ultra, I expected to notice the zero drop more. And the Torin 7 lands quite flat and your toes do a lot of the work, but that four foot rock offers just enough roll through to take the edge off that low drop. So if you're looking for your first zero drop shoe, this might offer a good introduction. Now I've seen many reviewers tipping the Torin 7 as a good versatile all rounder daily trainer, but in my tests, I found they were definitely much happier cruising low and slow at easy or recovery pace than they were trying to knock out the very fastest paced miles. Now they can cope with up-tempo efforts, but they wouldn't be my first choice. The road eating comfort comes largely from the boosted midsole compression that delivers more return and resilience than the likes of the Ultra Via Olympus, though these avoid being squishy and wobbly like some more cushioned daily trainers that you can get out there. Now the Torin 7 runs quite notably firmer than the really soft springy combination you get from the likes of the Asics Gel Nimbus 25 or something like the New Balance 1080 V13. So if you like your stack a bit stiffer, these might well be for you. Verdict then, well I think the Alta Torin 7 is a well-balanced, happy cruiser that ticks a lot of the right boxes for a good daily trainer. If you're looking for an easy mile option that offers balanced cushioning, good reliable stability, 
and good overall comfort, they're definitely an interesting option. Or if you want a shoe that could help you transition to zero drop, the Torrent 7 might be a good bridge. Now, some fans of bigger stacked shoes might find them okay for faster paced efforts, but for me, they fall just short of offering that top speed agility and punch that many of the newer daily trainers, the super trainers, the plated trainers now offer. They wouldn't be my choice for intervals or anything faster than marathon paced training runs. And overall, I tend to look for a little more range and versatility in the best do it all daily shoes. Now we're testing it now, but I think the newer four mil drop ultra forward experience feels faster and more versatile, for example. And for a similar price, I think shoes like the Hoka Mac 5, the Saucony Triumph 21, the OnCloud Surface 7, those kind of shoes all offer a more comprehensive all round package. So there you have it, that has been my review of the Ultra Torin 7. Hope you found it useful. Don't forget to hit us up with any questions in the comments below. Like, subscribe, ring the bell to get notified about other videos when they pop onto the channel. Otherwise, hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, good luck with any of the running that you're doing out there. Whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, go and get it, and we hope to see you again soon on the Run Testers. Thanks for watching.